Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome everyone to Too Good to be True. Thank you for taking the time to listen. The subject for today's show is amazing animal survival stories, starting with the honeybees of Notre Dame. Before we start getting into details, let's just really freely talk about psychic insight and how we apply it. We choose a subject, then research it, and based on that research, we determine what we, we, what we think needs to be explained by creating a series of questions. Then Justina provides psychic insight to answer those questions. The Psychic Insight is narrated towards the end of the show. Accepting the Psychic Insight is a question of individual belief. Now let's go through the disclaimers. Here are the disclaimers. Neither of us claim to have any expertise in any subjects that we discuss. We relate information we find through research and the Psychic Insight. We are always delighted to hear from the listeners. The show only lasts an hour. We don't have the time to present exhaustive research on any topic. This means that there will be information that we miss. We want to provide a basis for the psychic insight. We don't care if a theory turns out too good to be true, as the show name suggests. We are only interested in finding out more of the truth about topics. Spirit can only relate insight that is appropriate for our time and history. Free will cannot be affected. Only comments that are appropriate for our time can be given through the psychic insight. Much of the subject matter in shows may have already been covered many times in other media. We want to look into subjects in a new, different way and be thought-provoking. We are not so good with pronouncing names, we apologize. And neither of us have any particular knowledge of biology or veterinary science. If we have missed anything, we apologize. The partial destruction of Notre Dame in Paris has been very much in the news after fire broke out there on April of 2000, in April of 2019, as described by Wikipedia. Quote, on the 15th of April 2019, just before 1820 CEST, a structure fire broke out beneath the roof of Notre Dame Cathedral, Paris. By the time it was extinguished 15 hours later, the sp building spire and most of its roof had been destroyed and its upper walls severely damaged. Extensive damage to the interior was prevented by its stone vaulted ceiling, which largely contained the burning roof as it collapsed. Many works of art and other treasures were evacuated early in the emergency, but many others were damaged or destroyed. The cathedral's two pipe organs and its three 13th century rose windows suffered little to no damage. Three people suffered injuries, unquote. 
The injuries experienced by two policemen and a firefighter were reported as being slight. There is renovation work ongoing. Maybe some of the workers' equipment malfunctions to start the fire. But how old is Notre Dame? Wikipedia describes the cathedral as follows. Quote, Notre Dame de, Par de, Par de Paris, meaning Our Lady of Paris, often referred to simply as Notre Dame, is a medieval Catholic cathedral on the Ile de la Cité in the fourth arrondissement of Paris. The cathedral is consecrated to the Virgin Mary and considered to be one of the finest examples of French Gothic architecture. Its pioneering use of the rib vault and flying buttress, its enormous and colorful rose windows, and the naturalism and abundance of its sculptural decoration set it apart from early Romanesque style. Major components that make Notre Dame stand out include one of the largest organs and its immense church bells. The cathedral's construction was begun in 1160 under Bishop Maurice de Soleil and was largely completed by 1260, though it was modified frequently in the following centuries. In the 1790s, Notre Dame suffered desecration during the French Revolution. Much of its religious imagery was damaged or destroyed. In the 19th century, the cathedral was the site of the coronation of Napoleon I, the baptism of Henry, Count of Chambord, and the funerals of several presidents of the Third French Republic." Unquote. The Ile de la Cité is one of the two natural islands on the River Seine within the city of Paris. The fourth arrondissement of Paris is the fourth administrative district of 20 in the city. It's high time to talk about the bees. I'm going to quote from the IFL Science website. Since 2013, the rooftop of Notre Dame has been home to over 180,000 bees as part of a citywide initiative to boost declining bee numbers. Against all odds, all three hives managed to survive and appear to be enjoying the spring sunshine once again. The bees are alive. Until this morning, I had no news, Nicholas Gantz, the Notre Dame's resident beekeeper, told AFP on Thursday. At first, I thought that the three hives had burned, but I had no information. Then I saw from satellite images that this was not the case, and then the cathedral spokesman told me that they were going in and out of the hives. As you can see from the drone images of the cathedral roof, the hives were a reasonable distance from the main fire. However, the bees would still have been blown full of smoke. Bees do not have lungs, so they cannot die from smoke inhalation. Instead, they breathe through a network of tiny tubes called tracheae. If you have ever seen a beekeeper working with their hive, you'll know that they occasionally use smoke to calm down the bees. Bees mainly communicate through smell and pheromones. If a hive becomes disruptive, bees will start to pump out alarm pheromones to alert the rest of the hive. However, smoke helps to mask the pheromones and dampen the sensitivity of the bees' antennae. So when the fire hit on the evening of April 15th in the Notre Dame Cathedral, the rooftop bees did not abandon their hives and instead became pacified by the billows of smoke. Instead of killing them, the CO2 from smoke makes them drunk but them to sleep, added Gant, speaking to the Associated Press. When bees sense fire, they gorge themselves of honey, and stay to protect their queen, who doesn't move. I saw how big the flames were, so I immediately thought it was going to kill the bees. Even though that they were 30 meters, approximately 100 feet lower than their top roof, the wax in the hives melt at 63 degrees Celsius, 145.4 degrees Fahrenheit, end quote. AFP stands for the American Free Press, a weekly newspaper. That story really made my day. I think it's time for the story of Tilly, an 11-year-old Irish Setter Spaniel mix, and Phoebe, a 4-year-old Basset Hound, pets that went missing on a walk in the island of Vashon, Washington, in the Seattle area. The Planet Custodian website and an article from 2015 describes the events. The owners waited for their return but soon realized something was wrong. They tried to scan the place around their home but they didn't get any clue of their two pets. For help, the restless owner contacts Amy Carey, who works with the Vashon Island Pet Protectors as a volunteer. They spent days scouring the area and hoped to find the missing dogs, but failed to get any, any clue. They also posted pictures of the pets with a notice on the Pet Protectors Facebook page. 
Phoebe had fallen into a cistern, a cistern deep in a ravine miles away from home. She was unable to climb back and worse, there was no one to help. Her buddy Tilly was free and could have found her way home. The sister was located in a very isolated place and there was no human habitat nearby, unquote. What exactly is a cistern? It's just a water tank set in the ground, but it was deep enough that Phoebe had to stay trapped where she was. The article continues, quote, Tilly didn't leave her. It was, all over a week. it was over a week now that Phoebe was stuck in the cistern all this time, Tilly guarded her and tried to get attention of anyone she could find. One day, when the owner had almost lost hope of ever seeing his pets, a farmer told Carrie about a dog he saw on his property, and it looked like the lost pets posted on Facebook. He told him that the dog was trying to get attention to something. In Carrie's own words, after he reached the spot, she had quietly approached him, and when she got his attention, turned around and headed back toward the ravine nearby. I decided to check it out. When I got there and looked down, Tilly saw me but didn't come running up. She just stayed near the edge of the cistern, pressed with her head as close as she could get. Had she run up, we might have never realized that Phoebe was down there. She just stayed put, making it so clear that I had to come to her so I could see her friend. Finally, Phoebe was rescued. They were miles away from the place that they'd been seen before. It was Tilly going very pointedly up to this person in their pasture, letting herself be seen and running back to Phoebe. That's why we found them. It's really amazing, said Carrie, unquote. The aftermath was that the farmer immediately destroyed the 90-year-old uh, tank. Tilly was recognized by being awarded the Washingtonian of the day by Governor Jay Inslee. What is the next amazing animal survival story? It's again from the Seattle area. The story is about a great horned owl included in a Washington Post article dated May the 8th, 2018 as follows. It was, quote, it was to say the least a very bad, very harrowing experience. After all that, more than two months of rehab, 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 rehabilitation for a mangled wing must have seemed like no big deal. Oh, he stood out, said Jennifer Convey, director of the Paul's Wildlife Center in Linwood, Washington. He's unusual. The saga of this raptor, which the clinic staff referred to as he, though they did not determine gender, began when it arrived at the Paul's in November. The center treats about 4,000 injured animals a year, half of them birds. The patient's left humerus was broken, leaving its dappled grey wing twisted around, Convey said. The left of its piercing golden eyes was dilated and had a hemorrhage, probably as a result of the truck's impact. But I think we'll have to continue with this quote after the break, Justina. Yes, we'll continue after the short break. And you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xcbn.net. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by Shaman Worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance Shamana healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we were discussing amazing animal survival stories. And Dad, you were telling the story about the great horned owl. So can you please can continue the quote from the Washington Post. Yes, I will, Justina. Thank you. A colleague of the driver had brought the owl in, Convey said, and relaying that he had been driving in eastern Washington when he collided with a bird. Assuming it was a goner, he continued nearly 300 miles to a Seattle suburb, where he parked the truck overnight. The next day, the driver took the truck through a car wash, the kind with frontal sprays, whirling brushes, and concussive winds, according to Audubon which first reported the owl's tail, and then drove to work. It was there that he noticed his license plate was bent and that something feathered and moving was near it, unquote. The truck would have been a pickup truck to go through a car wash. The Audubon mentioned is the National Audubon Society, and the owl was assigned case number 2017-4242. How on earth did the owl survive the journey and being stuck overnight, let alone the beating and the car wash? Somehow it did, but it was in a bad way. The article continues, quote, The bird was in pain, Naomi Summer, that, that driver's colleague, told Audubon. Its wing was crumpled. It was cold and rainy. We really didn't expect it to survive. But an examination at Paul suggested otherwise. The owl's numerous was still viable. The nerves were still intact and the circulation good, Convy said. 2017 42 42 spent about a month with its broken pinned wing wrapped to its body. After the wing had healed sufficiently, the bird underwent physical therapy, which for owls involved sedation, massage, and stretching. It was moved to enclosures where it would, could practice flying and eventually hunting live mice. Predictably, that owl won. It did beautifully, Convy said, of the hunting trials, unquote. So was 2017-42-42 released into the wild? Yes, back to the habitat in the area where it had been hit by the pickup truck. The next story is about two horses that survived the Atlas wildfire of October 2017 that broke on a location about 40 miles or about 65 kilometers north of San Francisco. Wikipedia describes the Atlas wildfire wildfire as follows, quote, The Atlas fire was a 2017 wildfire burning in Napa County, California, north of the city of Napa, near Napa Soda Springs. It was one of 14 large fires simultaneously burning in eight northern Californian counties in what was called the Northern California Fire Storm. Governor Jerry Brown declared a state of emergency. The fire, which started on October 8th, had by October 12th burned 51,057 acres, 207 square kilometers of land, and was 77% contained. By October 12th, the fire stretched from Lake Berryessa to south to Napa, but a fire break was established across Atlas Peak Road, unquote. So what happened to the two horses? As flames erupted at Bella Quercia Vineyard on Atlas Peak Road late Sunday night, Sammy and Lolly ran. Sammy and Lolly are cattle horses, one black and one brown. 
On the night that the Atlas fire began tearing through the Napa Hills, branch employee Pepe Tamayo set them loose. Ten foot, ten foot tall flames were lapping at his house, he said, but he knew he had to save the animals. So he told his wife to leave as he sprinted towards the horses to let them go. It happened so quickly, Tamayo said. Two days later, he found the horses back on the ranch. They were thirsty and tired. They hadn't eaten in two days. He led the horses out of the Scorch Ranch, where structures like his home had been reduced to ash. He was greeted by a couple down the road. He had waited out the fires on their ranch, which still had water, its fences still intact. Tamio led the horses into a cattle pen. They made a beeline for the water trough, unquote. So nobody knows where the horses went and what they did, except Lolly and Sammy themselves. But the next story is about a cat named Boo, who went missing in West Yorkshire in the north of England and was returned home after 13 years. A London Daily Express newspaper article from August of 2018 describes the events. The word moggy is British slang for a pet cat with no particular pedigree. Quote, an elderly moggy has finally found its way home after going missing for an incredible 13 years. Janet Adamovitz was left heartbroken when her beloved tabby, tabby cat called Boo disappeared unexpectedly in 2005, aged just four. The married stepmama, too, plastered missing posters of Boo to lampposts in Harrogate, West Yorks, and put an advert in a local paper. But after a year, Janet gave up hope and eventually decided to give a home to two other cats, three-legged Ollie in 2008 and Tessie in 2014. So after the now 70-year-old Moggy was brought into a local vet after being found mysteriously 40 miles away in Poplington, East Yorkshire, it was more than just a shock. I got a call on Thursday to say I had a missing, I had a, a cat missing, said Mrs. Adamovitz, adding, I said, I don't think it, I do. They're both here. But they said, We're, we've looked on the system and it says you own a cat called Boo. I thought it was weird, but I couldn't believe it when I got to the vets and they had her there, and she still remembers me. I don't know where she had been, I think possibly astray, but being fed by strangers or catching her own food. Despite being a little dehydrated and weary, Boo was in generally good health. She was taken to Wixton Vets in York by a lady who did not leave her name or details, other than the fact that the cat had been found in Potlington and had been lurking around for a few weeks. Mrs. Adamovitz, who lived in Harrogate all her life, said, Boo was very lively as a young kitten, enjoyed the outdoors and adventuring, but would always return home. We don't know how she got all those 40 miles, but it could have been many number of reasons. She has done well as a 17-year-old cat to last that long as a stray cat. It really is remarkable. Despite only being five, year, five years old, she still remembers me and has been my shadow ever since coming home. The other two cats are not impressed, but hopefully Boo is finally home for good. Boo enjoyed family life as a youngster, and although often outdoors and adventuring, she would always return home for the night, unquote. Boo had been identified at the vet clinic by having been microchipped years ago. Our final story is about a black and white cat called Jacob, also from the British Isles and also from August of 2018. That must have been a good month for animal stories, especially about cats. An article in the London Daily Mail newspaper describes the events that took place in Scotland. Quote, a cat has miraculously escaped with just a bruised nose after being trapped inside a car hood for nine days and driven up to 80 miles around town. Jacob, the black and white moggy, rarely ventures outside, but when the seven-year-old feline disappeared, his owner, Sharon Sterling, was worried. The 49-year-old from Kilmarnock, East Ayrshire, East Ayrshire, made posters, door knocked and searched everywhere for a beloved cat, but didn't think to look under the grill of her dad's car. On July the 27th, Sharon swapped cars with her 70-year-old father, Alex, while he recovered from an operation and couldn't drive. The businesswoman believed Jacob must have jumped into the car before she drove it to work. She said, I got up for work around 6 a.m. and couldn't find Jacob which was unusual because he never normally leaves for long, unquote. Where was it stuck? Behind the radiator grill at about the level of the license plate. 
but a cat would be expected to last only a few days without food or water, perhaps only three days without water. The article continues, quote, I call cats protection, but they didn't hear, they hadn't heard anything. So the next day I started getting posters made up to put through people's doors. After nine days of anguish and a car being delivered back to his original owner, Chan received a call to say her dad had found Jacob under the grill of his car. She said, my dad called me and said, it's about the cat. I've got him and you'll never guess where I found him. I couldn't believe it when he told me Jacob was in the grill and dad was as shocked as me. He must have got in some time. He must have got in some time on Monday night and been there when I took the car to work in the morning and stayed there when I dropped the car back off at my dad's. It wasn't until Alex stopped off to do some shopping at Asda, he knows his Jacob was wedged in the grill. He kept on hearing it when he was loading the shopping into the car. So he got down and looked under the car and he could see a cat's eyes shining. He still didn't know it was Jacob until he drove over to the vet and said, I have a cat stuck under in my grill. Sharon met with her dad and drove the car to the nearest garage so he could be rescued. Four guys were trying to help get Jacob out, but he was really stuck. We got his legs out, but we couldn't get his head. When we eventually edged him out, he just clung to, clung to me, he, she said. Mechanics from Ingram Motor and Group in Kilmarnock, where the cat was rescued, pried the front bumper off the car and squeezed him out. After 20 minutes of perseverance, Jacob, the black and white moggy, was back with his loving owner, unquote. The Asda referred to as a large chain of supermarkets. It's time for the first question. In the Notre Dame fire, which started on April the 15th, 2019, were the three injuries that were reported for two policemen and a firefighter as slight injuries that will soon heal? Yes. Which works of art and other treasures were destroyed? Basically, a lot of works of art were saved because they weren't in the roof. The main items that were destroyed were the architectural parts of the ceiling and the art that was more on the ceiling. So some of the art got damaged with the fire with the smoke that went through. However, the smoke damage is not major and can be fixed pretty easily. So it's more the actual structural damage, but the main structure is still surviving. Most of the more expensive artwork and main structural aspects are still standing. But we'll have to continue after this short break, and you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. here and they've been here for thousands of years making their presence known in the shadows they might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife but who are they what do they want why are they here perhaps most concerning has the government been aware of their presence all along The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God, and finally, After the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God. 
the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we're discussing amazing animal survival stories. Dad, can you please continue with the questions and psychic insight? Was the start of the fire accidental and associated with the ongoing renovation work? Yes. Why was the Catholic Church attacked during the French Revolution with Notre Dame having much of its religious imagery damaged or destroyed? Basically, they make a point. So they knew attacking the religious place would make a large point since religion was a source of conflict in many different ways. So it was easier to make a point by going after somewhere religious such as that. Why is Notre Dame so iconic to the city of Paris and to the country of France? It basically represents a church, of course, which has been a big factor throughout the history of France. So the religion and religious aspects are something that is historically very prevalent. It also represents being more inclusive for all. So letting all come to the church, visitors from all over come. And also, just to add a side note, it also adds the artwork, which represents more the inclusive nature, but also represents how artwork can speak messages to the people. So the artwork kind of speaks for itself. Why was Notre Dame chosen to be the home to 180,000 bees in three hives? Basically, one, since it has more of a protection factor, and two, they feel more at home with the wood-like structures that are similar to trees that they're used to living in. So it's a place that's very easy to raise the bees, and the bees also enjoy it there. What was happening to the bees and the hives when they would have been blown full of smoke during a blaze that destroyed the wooden roof? Basically, they went into a sleep-like state, almost a coma, where they went into almost a hibernation mode, where their essential functions were running, but their non-essential functions were turned off. So they basically slept through most of the smoke and made it so that they would kick in all the survival instincts that they could without using too much energy. How did the hive survive? Were they far away? Were they far enough from the heating being, from the heat being 30 meters, 100 feet lower than the top roof? Yes and no. It was also to do with their sleep-like state. So yes, they were far enough away, but they also went into their survival mode where they basically did that to their bodies so that their bodies would survive and they would have a higher chance. So in the wild, they are naturally are used to trying to adapt to fires, such as forest fires, where they have over time have evolved to be able to fight fires in the best possible way for them when they go into the sleep-like state. With wax in the hives melting at 63 Celsius or 145.4 degrees F, how did, how hot did the wax actually get? It got very close to the temperature, so it was about to melt. Did the bees understand that they could be in grave danger when the fire started? It took a little bit to get to them, but they did realize that the fire was coming and they had to react to it quickly. Did the smoke actually calm them down, preventing them from pumping out alarm pheromones? Not exactly. They did pump out alarm pheromones when the smoke first hit them, warning other bees there was danger and there was smoke. 
However, then the smoke did kick in and it was helping with the calming process. Did eating honey and not abandoning the hives help save the three colonies? Yes. Why was the news of the bees surviving such a big lift to the people, to people around the world? It basically represented that even with the burning of the building, there's still life that survived. So it represented that even though tough times and extreme circumstances, there's life that can still survive. So there was a traumatic experience of Notre Dame burning, but there was also this light at the end of the tunnel. And also represented how animals can survive their very miraculous things, where they're not expected to survive. However, animals are fighting for survival and the survival instinct kicks in. So it shows that basically in a way you can summarize that if there's a will, there's a way. What can we learn from the bees of Notre Dame and their survival? Basically, what can be learned is that the animals have very unique adaptations and can survive through many harsh circumstances, and that through evolution, they have learned different ways to evolve and evolve to factors such as fires. And it can also be learned that the bees still have a lot more to be studied about them. Not everything is already known, and there's a lot more to them than just what is on the surface. So learning more about the sleep they stay could actually lead to helping humans in a way and other animals. Changing subject to Tilly and Phoebe, how did the two pet dogs go missing on their walk on the island of Vashon? They basically wandered away since they found an animal scent and were going after that scent. Rather than going home, why did the two dogs travel miles to the water tank? They were following the scent. How did Phoebe, the basset hand, find herself in the water tank? She fell in, so she was curious about the tank and ended up falling in. Why didn't Tilly leave Phoebe instead of remaining to guard her? Basically, survival instincts, so to get as much help as possible. How did Tilly know to try and get the attention of anyone she could find? Basically, she knew that it was easier to find humans to help. So she knew that humans knew how to try and help with the situation when she couldn't. How did Tilly know to quietly approach the farmer and when she got his attention, turn around and head back towards the nearby ravine? The instinct between humans and dogs. So Tilly knew that getting the farmer's attention would have to be done in a certain way and used her instincts. The farmer did a great job in contacting Amy Carey after recognizing Tilly from pictures on Facebook. But why didn't he follow, follow Tilly? Did he just want to leave it to the professionals? Yes, and he wanted to attend to his own day. So he had a very busy day that he had to go to also. When Amy Carey went to the location, how did Tilly know to... to not run up to her, but rather stayed by the water tank with her head pressed as close as she could get to ensure that Phoebe would be found. And again, these instincts, so to be at her side for one, and two, she stayed right by the tank that would lead the humans right to the tank. Did T Tilly know that Amy was only there to find the two dogs? Yes. Was Amy correct that Tilly, by letting herself be seen and running back to Phoebe, was amazing? Or are, or are most dogs capable of amazing feats every single day? Basically, the survival instincts kick in, but most dogs are capable of this amazing feat. So they have this natural instinct to alert when in danger and to respond between humans and dogs. So they realize that humans are there to help for the most part and that in dangerous circumstances they can help. But they also have to make sure to get the attention of humans. Why was Tilly so dev devoted to Phoebe? The friendship and bond they shared. Did Tilly realize what an unusual honor it was to be awarded Washingtonian of the day by the state governor? No, it was just an award. So to a dog, they prefer something like a treat or something they can eat. Why is the story of Tilly and Phoebe so uplifting for so many people? It just shows that one bond between animals and also the bond between humans and animals. So it's just no matter what, humans and animals do share this type of compassion where the animals in the story did not give up and the humans didn't give up. It also represents that animals in general are a lot smarter than people think and have the snack to survive. And also the relationship between the two dogs 
where they form these type of friendships. Changing subject to the Great Horned Owl, 2017, 42, 42. How did the bird get hit by the truck? He was flying in in the wrong place at the wrong time. Was the truck moving so fast that the owl did not know it was coming? Yes, so the truck was moving too quickly, and a lot of birds don't see trucks or cars approaching since they are moving too quickly for them to realize. Was the owl male or female? Male. Why did the driver think the owl was dead had it been knocked unconscious? Yes, and it was not moving. Were there injuries other than a broken wing and a hemorrhaged left eye? Yes, a lot of bruises and scratches. What was the owl thinking when it, when it was on its 300-mile journey, injured and stuck in the radiator grill of the fast-moving truck? Basically, he was trying to survive, so using his survival instincts, and also wanting to have help and trying to get help, and also was in a lot of pain. Did the driver take the truck to the car wash to clean off what he thought was a dead owl? Yes. Did the car wash have the effect of getting the owl moving so that the owner noticed it down by the bent license plate? Yes. How was the owl able to survive the impact when hit by the truck, the 300-mile journey, the overnight stop, the cold and rainy weather, and then the beating in the car wash? Basically, survival kicked in, so some animals can survive to the extreme. So the owl went into a fight or flight where it knew it had to fight for its life and decided to try and fight as much as possible. So the owl knew that if he didn't, if it didn't try its all, then it would not survive. And basically, again, it goes back to the natural survival instinct that they want to survive, and most animals will survive at all costs. How was the owl able to make a complete recovery? Basically, again, the survival instinct. So wanting to survive and the evolution, the animals do all they can just to survive another day. During the rehabilitation at the Paul's Wildlife Center, did the owl realize that his human captors were helping the owls return to the wild? Yes. I think that's it. Uh, we, that's all we got time for before the break, Justina. Yes, we'll continue after the break, and you're listening to Too Good to Be True with Justina Marsh and Pete Marsh on the Exxon Broadcast with Network, www.xcbn.net. here and they've been here for thousands of years making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. Christopher Fulton is a survivor of the National Security State. All he wanted to do was preserve history when he acquired a Cartier watch from the estate of President Kennedy's personal secretary. But that simple act set off a terrible chain reaction. He was pursued by the U.S. Justice Department and the FBI, thrust into the middle of the U.S. government's Assassination Records Review Board, even monitored and pursued by the Russian government. All because that Cartier watch was the missing link of evidence, a timepiece worn by JFK that fateful day in Dallas, a link resulting in Christopher being incarcerated and attacked for nine years 
Lions because he opened a hidden chapter in history. The intriguing journey outlined fully in Christopher Fulton's memoir, The Inheritance, is available now through Trinday.com or Amazon.com. The Inheritance, Poisoned Fruit of JFK's Assassination by Christopher and Michelle Fulton is a must-read, an incredible tale of how easily our own government can overrule justice. The Inheritance, Poisoned Fruit of JFK's Assassination. Welcome back to Too Good to Be True. And before the break, we're going through the questions and psychic insight about amazing animal survival stories. Dad, can you please continue with the questions? Changing subject to Lolly and Sammy, the two cat horses that survived the Atlas wildfire with 10 feet high flames and dead smoke. What were they thinking when Pepe Tamayo set them loose? Basically, they were thinking they had to get somewhere safe and that they had to try and find somewhere to survive. Earlier, did they have the instincts to know that know the wildfire was heading in their direction and that they were in grave danger? They Yes, they even knew before the humans could smell it. At the time, did Pepe Tamayo think that the two horses had little chance of survival? Yes. What did Lolly and Sammy do next to find a place safe from the smoke inhalation or being surrounded by flames? They basically went to, you could call it caves, but more of a rock-like structure where they could take shelter and get away from flames and smoke as soon as possible. How were they able to navigate their way home back to the Scorch Ranch? By smelling the ranch. Did luck or good fortune play a part in their survival? They were smart, so mostly that. They were smart enough to find somewhere that was a shelter. So it wasn't really luck or good fortune, but more their natural instincts. Changing subject to Boo the tabby cat, why did Boo disappear in 2005, leaving her home behind? Basically to go on ventures, to find a new adventure. What was Boo doing for the next 13 years? Was she living as a wild animal hunting for food, or did she find a new home? She found a new home that took care of her, so she had this new home to go to. Why did Boo leave her second home? To go on adventures, cat adventures. How did Boo survive so long on her adventures? She survived since different humans would help her, so humans helped her along the way during her journey, and her new home had taken her in and fed her, made sure she had water and milk and all her necessities. Did the people at Boo's second home know that she had been found safely after she had left them? No. Why didn't Boo go back to her original home? Was it because she could not find her way back? No, she liked her second home, so she decided she liked the ventures there and wanted to stay there. That's until she got bored with her second home? Yes. Where did Boo travel over the fourteen over the 13 years? Was it farther than the 40, 40 miles to Pocklington? Yes, it was more like 70 miles, so 30 miles farther than that. Was it partly due to old age that Boo had been lurking around Pocklington for a few weeks and was found to be di- dehydrated and weary? Yes, and she was also trying to get back to her original home, but cat adventures are harder when you are an old cat. How after 13 years did Boo remember her original owner, Janet Anamovitz, shadowing her on her his retu- on her return home. Since he remembered his original owner, and cats do remember things and do have memories, so she knew where her original home was. Did Boo realize that by disappearing that she would be missed by her first owner and then by her second owner? Yes. So her search for adventure overcame that concern. Correct, and the search and adventure was more important, and she didn't think that the humans would miss her that much. Changing subject to Jacob, the black and white cat, why was August of 2018 a good month for amazing cat stories in the British Isles? Basically because the news needed some more positive, upbeat stories. So it just happened to be a point where more positive stories were being shown, where it gave more people hope. Why did Jacob go under the hood of Sharon Sterling's father's car? Was it because it was just somewhere new to explore and it was out of sight? Yes, partially, and partially because he smelled some possible food. 
How did Jacob get himself wedged behind the radiator grill? He was chunky. How did Jacob survive without food or water for nine days, especially as after three days of no water, a cat would hardly survive? His survival instincts kicked in. So he chose survival and basically went with a fight or flight, where he knew that if he gave up, he would not be able to survive. So his natural instincts of survival at any cost kicked in. Why didn't Jacob make noise so he could be found? He was putting all his energy into surviving, so he didn't have any left for making noises. What was Jacob, Jacob thinking as the car was being driven around town? Basically help. Why wasn't Jacob any worse for wear than just having a bruised nose when the bumper was removed from the car? Because of his survival instincts and his will to survive. So he wanted to survive at any cost. How did Jacob bruise his nose? He bumped it against the radiator. Is it any surprise that cats are said to have nine lives? Yes and no. Again, every animal has this natural instinct to survive. But cats have been shown to be very survival-oriented, where they will survive at any cost. So even going back in ancient times, cats have evolved a lot to survive at many different odds. So they have been through a lot of different circumstances with different animals, humans, and the changing of the earth. So they have survived so much, and their natural instincts and the course of evolution has taken place to make cats more durable in a way you could say. What can we learn from the survival stories of the owl, the horses, and the cats? Basically that those animals have remarkable stories. So these amazing stories occur, and these aren't the only examples of them. They occur at other times, too, and that there's hope out there. The animals will survive at almost any cost, and they're a lot smarter than we think they are. So humans think that animals aren't the smartest things, but most smart being on the earth. However, they forget that animals also have their natural instincts and know more than humans actually know they know. So there's more to study on animals and never to give up. So there's always hope. And even if there's a small chance of survival or hope, there's still this fight or flight where in many cases, the animal will actually go into the fight mode where it wants to survive at any cost. That was the last answer. Are many animals being able to survive against the odds when necessary? Too good to be true. That depends on what you are prepared to believe. Well, our first story about the bees at Notre Dame, I, I was just absolutely amazed and surprised when I heard that story. And I guess also amazing was the fact that uh, the wax nearly got to its uh, melting temperature and those bees were very close to not surviving. I think my biggest takeaway from all these different animal stories is that there's a lot we don't actually understand about the animals. So it seems that in a lot of these cases, we don't actually understand how smart the animals are. And obviously, animals have to be very smart to survive against elements since they have to take shelter in their own way. They don't have a home to go into. They make their own homes. Yeah. I just mentioned uh, Tilly and Phoebe. Uh, there's lots of pictures on the internet, and I think they must have been taken when they were actually found by it was Amy Carey. You see uh, Tilly right by the edge of this, um, I guess, sunken water tank, and there's Phoebe, the basset hand, and Phoebe's sort of looking full of it, and there's um, Tilly just getting as close as possible to the edge. So I think it's they're fantastic pictures, so I'd go look for them. Yeah, so I also really like the story of the two horses from the wildfire in California, since it's interesting that even in a hard time where there's a fire, there's a blaze going smoke, the horses still sought some shelter, and then even after finding the shelter, they were able to return home, since I'm sure nobody expected them actually to be able to survive. So it was really nice they got the chance to survive, but when you think of a fire, especially a forest fire in California that's huge, raging on you don't think horses are actually going to survive no i think uh, a lot of horses sadly didn't survive in wildfires in california the interesting thing is how the the bees of notre dame really survived because they'd adapted to forest fires so they just uh, the fact they were in a cathedral with a wooden roof okay that's fine 
but they just behaved like the wooden roof was trees and there was a fire and they they just acted like they would in a forest fire it's kind of a <laughs> kind of an amazing story but i think that's interesting and another interesting point to bring up is that during forest fires different animals react in different ways and there's actually a post that was circulating around social media about different animals and not actually picking them up especially things like rabbits or bunnies since they're uh, parents or other same rabbits, bunnies, whatever species would actually come and find them. So they were advising people not to pick up the young since the parents actually put them into safety and were coming back for them. Okay, yes, because we, we don't believe that uh, animals can work things out. Um, I'm not sure why there were two cat stories from Britain in August of 2018 and uh, two rather amazing survival stories. I don't expect your 17-year-old cat to show up or to be missing for 13 years. And <laughs> the other cat, Jacob, uh, been st- uh, in a radiator grill. Um, cats don't do very well without food and water after just a few days. So th- those were pretty amazing. But it seems that um, animals just have that this amazing abilities, and we just don't give them credit for it. Well, on that note, let's mention our Facebook page at Too Good To Be True with the first two spelled T-W-O or our website at TooGoodToBeTrue.net. And if you have any suggestions, if you want to share your own survival stories of any amazing animals that you've encountered, feel free to message us on there. And we're always open to more suggestions. So if you want to hear more amazing animal survival stories or a totally unrelated topic, feel free to message us since we love getting suggestions. And as always, thank you so much for listening and we look forward to next week's show. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 
500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.